Well, you tried. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 failed Oscar bait movies of 2019. Jeez, forget I asked. Like I said, a damn mess. For this list, we're looking at films that seem tailor-made for award season, but that ultimately fail to capture the attention of the voting members of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. For the record, we're not saying these movies are bad. In fact, some of them are really good. Also, please note, films need to have received zero Oscar nominations to be considered for this list, meaning that movies like Richard Jewell and The Two Popes will not be considered, despite earning fewer nominations than expected. I know now that this left me empty and void of the world <laughs> for which the church is meant to help. Number 10, Just Mercy. Tell me everything that happened. This film boasts an 83% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and is just an incredible movie in every regard. It tells the true story of a recent law graduate in the 1980s, Brian Stevenson, fighting to save a wrongfully convicted man, Walter McMillan, before his death sentence is carried out. You always taught me to fight for the people who need the help most. Michael B. Jordan and Jamie Foxx turn in rock-solid performances as the two leads in this moving story. The social issues being explored in the film feel as pressing as ever, and director Dustin Daniel Cretton has crafted a mature film that keeps you engaged from start to finish despite a lack of spectacle. The National Board of Review and the NAACP took note, but apparently not the Academy. When people care about a thing that much, they'll do anything to get what they want. Number 9. Seaberg. But, of course, not all the films on our list are as good as Just Mercy. Despite a strong lead performance from Kristen Stewart, Seaberg is rather dull. Not to mention a seriously missed opportunity to tell a compelling true story. Million Americans look at you and they see an escape. They want the girl from the Midwest. It's America's sweetheart. The film follows its titular film star, Jean Seaberg, the French Nouvelle Vague icon who found herself under the scrutiny of the FBI when she became involved with Black Panther activist Hakeem Jamal. Who's that? Some actress. Just grabbing some free publicity. She has a history of donations to civil rights groups. She's a sympathizer, sir. I think she could be useful. It's a fascinating chapter in American civil rights and film history that many cinema-goers have never heard about. But sadly, this film doesn't do it justice. It lacks the nuance of its complex subject matter. Beyond Stewart, the wardrobe is pretty much all it gets right. I only ever wanted to help. Well, that doesn't make you a better person. That makes you a tourist. Number 8. The Kitchen the Academy loves a quality gangster film. So we remind them. The Godfather, The Departed, Need We Go On? Martin Scorsese's The Irishman earned 10 nominations. So what? That makes no sense. What do you mean? It does. No, it doesn't, but I don't want to debate. Think about it. I'm thinking about it, Jimmy. As such, armed with its strong cast and message of empowerment, The Kitchen seemed to have the perfect recipe to score big at the Oscars. Unfortunately, it was lacking one key ingredient, a good script. The talents of Melissa McCarthy, Tiffany Haddish, and Elizabeth Moss feel wasted here in a story that's needlessly convoluted, even by crime drama standards. It's a competitive market. Employers are looking for people they can depend on. You don't know me. The movie as a whole suffers from an identity crisis in terms of tone and style. And it's too bad because in some alternate reality, there's a great version of The Kitchen that cleaned up on awards night. Number 7. The Good Liar if we had to place bets on the Oscars based on a cast list and nothing else, the odds would very much be in favor of any film starring Helen Mirren and Ian McKellen. The Good Liar tells the story of a wealthy widow who meets someone of her generation online with whom she forms a connection. So tell me, have you done this a lot? Met people on the computer service? Little does she know, he is a practiced con man. How much do you think she's worth? Nearly three million pounds. You're going to take the lot? You bloody bet I'm going to take it all. Directed by the esteemed Bill Condon, The Good Liar seems to be in competent hands, both in front of the camera and behind it. What if it is? And sure enough, it proves to be a competent film, just not one that soars to the heights we expect, at least in the eyes of the Academy. Number 6. Where'd you go, Bernadette? Bernadette Fox, 20 Mile House, destroyed, failed. Yeah. You know, it's like failure has got its teeth in me and it won't stop shaking. Richard Linklater is arguably among the most influential and daring filmmakers in the business. He's given us such classics as Dazed and Confused and School of Rock, as well as more daring projects like A Scanner Darkly. But his Oscar nominations are admittedly few and far between. And you know why your brain discounts things? It's for survival. 
You need to be prepared for new experiences because they could signal danger. Armed with a best-selling novel and a two-time Academy Award-winning star in the form of Kate Blanchett, however, it seemed like this film might finally earn him some long-overdue love from the Academy. Apparently not, rated at just 48% on Rotten Tomatoes. Where'd You Go, Bernadette represents one of Linklater's more disappointing films. It's got plenty of charms, but it ultimately falls short of its source material and the talent involved. The most important thing for you to understand is that it's not your fault. That wasn't even the question. Number five, The Laundromat. What is a medium of exchange? And it could be uh, a nugget of gold, or some other shiny rocks that are generally found to be scarce. It could be uh, a slip of paper. In 2019, there was perhaps no Netflix original that seemed more tailor-made for award season than The Laundromat. An Academy Award-winning director? You can't ask for much better than Steven Soderbergh. And as for the cast, how about Meryl Streep and Gary Oldman? So, now is the time for real action. It starts with asking questions. Academy Award winners both. As if that's not enough to guarantee a healthy serving of nominations, The Laundromat is a biographical dramedy based on the incredible true story of the Panama Papers scandal. So, what went wrong? Well, simply put, the film gets bogged down by the complexities of the financial matters it explores and the narrative it's trying to tell. There are too many moving parts, and they never quite come together. Bed? Huh. Yeah, bed is it's such a big word for being such a small word. Number four, Lucy in the Sky. If you want people to take your film seriously, cast Natalie Portman in the lead. The three-time Academy Award nominee, who won for her role in Black Swan, is extremely consistent. Can you stop? Stop what? Working. And when we first saw the trailer for Lucy in the Sky, it seemed that nomination number four was inbound. Sure, it's director Noah Hawley's first feature film, but considering his stellar television resume, he's the creator of Fargo and Legion, we were not worried. Unfortunately, the resulting sci-fi is little more than a painful reminder that television and film are not, in fact, the same medium. The tale of obsession should be compelling, but the film juggles too many themes without ever finding firm narrative footing. Time to wrap it up. We're going home. Number three, The Aftermath. The Academy has a real soft spot for historical dramas and period pieces, especially those that star Kira Knightley. It's my wife, Mrs. Morgan. How do you do? Up to you, Mrs. Morgan. Atonement, Pride and Prejudice, Anna Karenina, The Imitation Game, they've earned multiple nominations each. But 2019 wasn't Knightley's year, as she starred in not one but two dramas that failed to garner attention despite respecting the formula. Official Secrets tells the true story of an Iraq War whistleblower, Catherine Gunn. The film was well received, it just didn't make much of an impact. The Aftermath, by contrast, is a serious misfire. Tell me I'm wrong. What I'm thinking. Tell me I'm losing my mind. Lewis. I'm so sorry. Co-starring Alexander Skarsgård and Jason Clarke, it's a paint-by-numbers adaptation of Ridian Brooks' novel of the same name that, despite romantic intrigue and the backdrop of 1945 Germany, fails to be particularly engaging. You didn't tell me what I was walking into. This isn't how it was supposed to be. None of this is how it is supposed to be. And yet here we are. Number two, The Goldfinch. There are many roads that lead to an Oscar, but few are quite as reliable as adapting a Pulitzer Prize-winning, critically acclaimed, best-selling work of literary fiction. If, to populate your cast, you were to feature such talents as Ansel Elgort, Finn Wolfhard, Sarah Paulson, Jeffrey Wright, and Nicole Kidman, all the better. The sooner we get back to a normal routine, the better. Keeping busy is the only thing for it. For good measure, get someone at the helm who already has a recent Best Picture nomination under their belt, like Brooklyn director John Crowley. Rather than the Oscar magnet we expected, however, The Goldfinch was DOA, both at the box office and with critics. Hey, John. Hey. Uh, I heard no. Yeah. Yeah, tough luck. It's beautiful to look at, but narratively, it doesn't capture the emotional, psychological, or narrative complexity of Donna Tartt's novel, and the end result is decidedly dull. I didn't mean to do it. Because what I've done cannot be undone. 
Hey, like we said, just because it's a failed Oscar bait movie does not mean it's bad. However, our number one is pretty universally regarded as terrible for so, so many reasons. So let's look at the honorable or dishonorable mentions, and then we'll find out the biggest fail of all the failed Oscar bait movies of 2019. I could help with the driving. No. Or not? Ah, oh, Judas Priest, get in. But no singing. You expected me a speech. I have only one to give. And it is the same one I'd give were we not standing on the brim of a battlefield. It is the same one I'd give were we to meet in the street by chance. Tell me a story in any language you want. Don't be ridiculous. The legend of Celador. No, I'm not a performing monkey. I think I'm going to spend the night here, sir, just in case anything comes up. Your wife doesn't mind. Well, she knows the drill. My wife knows the drill too, but she still minds. The mission isn't over for us, I promise. Listen, this is not a mission for me. This is my life. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one. Cats. Come, we're about to begin. If you are among the cinema goers bold enough to see this film, you know all too well that the critics were not exaggerating in their brutal but also genuinely baffled reviews. Going to the ball could get dangerous. Cats is, of course, an adaptation of the long running hit Broadway musical. It boasts numerous major stars, including Judi Dench, Idris Elba, Jennifer Hudson, Ian McKellen, and more. At the helm is Tom Hooper, the director behind such Academy-adored films as The King's Speech and Les Miserables. In short, it should have been a slam dunk. Instead, we got a film that's difficult to follow, embarrassingly lacking in self-awareness, and populated by characters overshadowed by very dodgy CGI. In short, it's one big, brightly colored hairball. Are you going to try for a different life? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.